Hi guys, welcome to Ink Bros, my name is Brandon, and thanks for joining us for episode 3 of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! In today's episode, we will be taking on Skull Servants, Branded Despiers, Tri Brigades, and Attic Nisters. Not sure why Yu-Gi-Oh! cards have got Instagram handles now, but that's modern Yu-Gi-Oh! for ya. And so, once again, let's play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> For the tournament today, I will be running my Dark Magician deck. Brandon, you're always trying to give me Dark Magician. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. But I have made some major changes to it and I have included some much needed cards to help me take on some of the more powerful decks out there. And here is my new deck list. So whilst on the surface it does look very similar to the previous two weeks, I've included three copies of Solemn Strike, which definitely comes in handy in these four duels, as well as Droll and Lockbird. And during the last two weeks, it was really important for me to start interacting with my opponent's boards a lot more. I find myself as a player naturally leaning more towards controlling the field rather than trying to swarm it. So I've included cards like Solemn Strike, like Droll and Lockbird, to try and lock down my opponents as much as I possibly can. The reason I find that I do this is because I'm trying to make the game as much like old Yu-Gi-Oh as possible. With my skill drains, I'm removing all effects from the field. With Solemn Strikes, I'm getting rid of those cards that negate everything. And my ultimate strategy is to make it a game of who's got the biggest stick. Not me. Out of all the weeks that I've been doing the Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, this by far has probably been my most favorite week. And I'm finding that, at least with some jewels, I'm actually giving people a lot more of a challenge. The most exciting thing that I found today was I found I came across another person who was returning to Yu-Gi-Oh! after a long time. Now speaking to Jai, he came into this tournament using a Skull 7 deck. Um, how long has it been since you last played Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I was playing around 2013, 2014, back when Burning Abyss shit all some life onto a new hotness. Fantastic, and how did you go during that time? Like were you... Uh, Used to play weekly at Good Games Melbourne. There was a YCS back there where it fairly decently with Infernoids. Mm -hmm. That was pretty fun. Did you ever place anything like that? Uh, not that well, but like, I had an undefeated streak for the first four rounds and then I wow. lost the rest of them. Oh, <laughs> damn. Got yeah. your deck here today. Uh, yep, got my deck here today. Good old fashioned Skull Sermon. Do you want to walk me through how your Skull 7 deck works? Because I've uh, seen them on um, Duel Master, but. Get white prints in the graveyard as much as possible because mm -hmm. whenever he gets sent, he sends a skull servant yeah. and a lady in white. Yeah. Nice. And, and then that becomes like a big, beefy yep. skull boy, doesn't it? King of the skull servants gets an extra thousand for every skull servant in the graveyard, and all these boys and girls treat yeah. themselves as skull servant in the yard. So that gets you to at least like nine or something like that. I, I think the current cap is 15k. Jeez. <laughs> I really, I really hope I do lose today, actually. That, that sounds like a cool deck. I don't care if I win or lose, I'm just like, I want to see it in action. I have encountered Skull Sevens before in Master Duel. They're a, lot of, they're a lot of fun to play with, and I find that those duels can go either way. If I'm not able to set up a board properly quickly enough, I find myself quickly overwhelmed by big skeletons. What I found nice to see is that it wasn't the same deck that you kind of see in tournaments now. It's, it's nice to see a deck that isn't purely around meta. It's about the fun of you go, which is why I came back to this game in the first place, is playing some fun games. Now after talking to him, I was so excited to see this deck in action, and I was praying to the Egyptian gods that I would be able to verse him. And sure enough, I was up against Jai and his Skull Servants in the very first round. Whilst I say I do know how Skull Servants work, I wanted to see how my deck would interact with his. The main tactics of my deck is locking down the field for special effects and banishing big monsters. As soon as I could, I tried to set up the loop 
of Eternal Soul and Dark Magical Circle. Now I was able to play smartly enough so that I was able to keep this loop continuing trying to control the board as much as possible so he wasn't able to bring out those spooky spooky skeletons. I was lucky enough to get an early lead in the very first round against the Skull Servants. Round two was a different matter. He, whilst he started second, he now knew what I was playing, which was Dark Magicians. Now, if I'm not quick enough to protect my back row, I'm in a lot of trouble. So sure enough, he side decked Harpy's Feather Duster, which got rid of all of my back row pretty quickly. And from there, he was able to build a very big skeleton and take round two. Before I get into how round three went, I just want to quickly say that this has probably been my most favorite duel so far, coming back into Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, the reason I came back into this is not because I want to be the very best like nobody ever was. I'm here to have fun and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Whilst the game is now currently controlled by a lot of meta monsters and decks, just from this game alone, it's only given me more incentive to stick to my Dark Magician deck. I do consider my deck very rogue against the metas. I want to see how powerful I can make this deck. Anyway, round three was anybody's game. He knew what I was playing, I knew what he was playing. He was very familiar with how my deck interacts with his and vice versa. Sing pro for Black Rose Dragon, blow up everything. Jesus. My main goal was to try and set up that loop again of Eternal Soul and Dark Magical Circle and just bringing out my Magician over and over again, trying to take out what cards that I saw were the most dangerous to me. Sure enough, I was able to control the board and he scooped. I was able to win my very first game of the day. Even if I lost this game, I had so much fun. Game 2 was a mirror match, I was versing Brandon again and he's branded. Despia deck. From Skull Servants to Grand Despia was a big jump in terms of meta, but I found my Magician deck able to stand up against the very best. Now I had a bit of an advantage of knowing what this deck looked like from Episode 2, so I knew what cards I needed to target, and I also knew that my strategy is I needed to get Skill Drain out as quickly as possible. I needed to lock down those crazy effects that those monsters have. And I was very lucky enough in the first duel that I was able to get Skill Drain and through some smart interacting with Brandon's branded with Brandon's branded Despia deck. Brandon and Rat. I was able to hold my ground long enough for him to scoop. I think I can't beat Skill Drain, I'm just gonna scoop. Scoop? Yeah. You can. It's called timing him out. What? <laughs> <laughs> true, it's true. Stall for the next 33 minutes. <laughs> just make sure you really understand his cards. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, let me read Dragoon again. Yep. <laughs> and admittedly, I was a little bit chuffed that I was able to stand my ground against the Brand of Despia, but Jesus. Did I get kicked after that? There is definitely a reason that Brand of Despias are considered one of the best decks right now. So I've lost one jewel, lost my second. Even though I'd lost jewel number two, I was still on a massive high. Even though I'm not winning the jewels, I'm becoming a I'm becoming a better player, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Is I want to be able to become a better player with my deck, and learn how to use my deck properly. In round three, I was up against Hero and his Tri Brigade deck. Now I had encountered Tribe Brigades in the past on Master Duel, so I was somewhat familiar with how they worked. However, Dark Magician decks are very notorious for bricking, and I bricked very, very bad back-to-back -back rounds. But even though I was able to somewhat play out of my brickish hand, I had no chance against the Tribe Brigade, and, and very, very, very quickly I lost. Duel 4 was with Rian and his At Acnista cards. Now, Rin had requested that I didn't film the duel, which is absolutely fair enough. But also a massive shame because I, we both had some great interactions. And so round one, he won. Round two, I won. And so when it came to round three, it was anybody's game. So both of us managed to load up our hands full of hand traps. Uh, f you. <laughs> f me. F you. Me? Fuck you. You! Me? Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! 
And so, whilst it might seem that I'm back to square one of winning one jewel out of four, I consider myself in a way better place than I started since episode one. I've, I now have a great sense of my Dark Magician deck and I know how it works. I'm confident with it and I'm introducing great cards that make all the difference in the world. But the main thing I found is the whole point of returning to Ego is that I wanted to do something different. Now I've been kind of stuck in life. I've been waking up, going to work, coming home, falling asleep, rinse and repeat over and over again. And I wanted to do something that was for me. And coming back to Yu-Gi-Oh! and meeting all the amazing people at Grand Day Games, whew, getting a little bit emotional about it. It's been an amazing experience. I want to keep continuing this series. I want to keep improving my Dark Magician deck and keep improving myself as a player. So thank you once again for sticking around and supporting the video. If you want to show the channel some love, make sure to like and subscribe to it. I put a lot of effort and money into these things. So if you want to support the channel or if you want to support my crippling addiction of Yu-Gi-Oh, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon so we can play some more Yu-Gi-Oh. Thank you.